Welcome, everyone. I am Bob Wurzelbacher, the director of the Respect Life Office for the Archdiocese of Cincinnati. And this is our video podcast series that we call Being Pro-Life. Each month, we'll discuss a different topic in the Respect Life arena. We'll hear a personal story from someone deeply affected by that issue. And finally, we'll share ways that you can get involved. This month's topic is pro-life activities around the world. We're going to speak with people from every corner of the globe this month. So let's talk now with this week's guest. Will you please introduce yourself? Hi, my name's Taylor Hyatt. I'm a disability rights activist living in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. I've worn many hats in the pro-life community. My current one is a board member with the Euthanasia Prevention Coalition. All right, so Taylor, so what's the status of abortion, legalization of abortion in Canada, and what kind of restrictions? Are they different based on the province or is it all pretty universal in the country? One thing that people outside Canada are always flabbergasted to find out is that we don't have a law. It was originally decriminalized in 1969 and at that time, women who sought the procedure had to go before a panel of three doctors to see whether it could be justified, for lack of a better word. And then in 1988, one of the country's top abortion providers won a court case which struck down all existing laws and Since then, we've lived in a vacuum. Abortions are allowed, but there is nothing in law. There's nothing that says they're not allowed past six months. So if you want an abortion in Canada, even up till birth, that's legal. Are there abortion centers or you just go to a hospital? There's both. There is standalone clinics where that is their main focus. You can go to a hospital. One disturbing thing that's unique to Canada is the limitations placed on public opposition to abortion. Um, Just a couple years ago in my province in Ontario, we had a law passed limiting public opposition to abortion to a certain number of meters away from facilities that provide it and even the pharmacies that would dispense such substances. So you are not legally allowed to basically protest abortion outside of a facility or a pharmacy? Locally, that means that our 40 Days for Life campaign has moved a couple blocks down the street. Personally, I'm not keen on the new location because it looks like we're protesting businesses that have nothing to do with it. Okay, well, let's let's switch to the topic that you're very familiar with, which is assisted suicide. So first, let's start by letting the public know where is Canada on the issue of assisted suicide? What are the restrictions? What are the situations under which it's legal? The bill went through our parliament in 2015 and came into effect in 2016. One of the eligibility criteria that stands out is you have to have a grievous and irremediable medical condition, which includes a disease, illness, or disability. That's interesting. So you don't even have to be terminally ill. Part of the definition of the grievous and irremediable medical condition, let's see, you have a serious and incurable illness, disease, or disability. You're in an advanced state of irreversible decline. That state of decline causes enduring physical or psychological suffering that is intolerable and cannot be relieved under conditions you consider acceptable. And then the reasonably foreseeable portion, which was just struck down in the province of Quebec, and now the whole rest of the country has to follow. Does this include simply psychological suffering? We're getting there. Another part of the bill was that our Health Canada, the division of government that deals with health all across the country, commissioned a study looking at three possible areas of expansion. They were for minors, for people who have only psychological conditions, and in an advanced directive. In other words, in a a living will, if you acquire, for example, a progressive condition and can no longer communicate your wishes, you can say, at X point, euthanize me. 
So here in the United States, even though people often push for legislation for assisted suicide based on the idea of ending suffering or the autonomy issue, the reality is that most people list as their reasoning, it has to do with not wanting to be a burden, has not wanting to have other people take care of them. Is that the case? In a recent report, again, we're going to go back to Oregon, concerns prompting assisted suicide requests include decreasing ability to participate in activities that make your life enjoyable, loss of autonomy, in other words, lack of disability supports, and loss of dignity. Unfortunately, non-disabled people often equate the ability to use the bathroom right. independently with your dignity. Right. Those first two issues have to do with barriers and bad public policy, and that last one reflects a negative view of disability. What's the common euphemism that assisted suicide activists use? Death with dignity. Right. That implies that if you have an illness or disability and you choose to live, that you lack the dignity we all have. Disabled people do not have to die to be dignified. Another important component to the fight against assisted suicide is resources so that people with disabilities can live well. Many, many people can only get the supports they need by living in an institution like a nursing home. In fact, there's a gentleman in the London area, his name is Roger Foley, and he has a progressive condition and he had applied for home care. The home care staff they sent dropped him, helping him get into his chair, fed him food that had been left out, gave him food poisoning, left a burner on, caused a fire in his apartment. And so he wound up in the hospital, suicidal due to his injuries and due to all of the chaos that these staff were causing. He refused to go back to these poorly functioning staff and they gave him the choice between stay in the hospital and pay end your life or go back to the staff which leads me to where i was originally trying to go if you can't get the supports you need to live in your own home in your community among your family friends and peers you're usually in a long-term care home these homes are unsanitary, in poor repair, there's staff turnover. And if you complain about any of this, you're thought to be complaining about something trivial. And these limitations and the, the dependence on the people and structures in an institution increase the probability that you're going to be neglected and abused. Is there something somebody living in the United States where you could say to them that they could do if they're caring about these issues in Canada and want to help in some way? The best thing you can do is get educated. Know what to say when you're having a conversation with your colleague, your relative, or God forbid your legislator if this stuff comes to your area. Check out the Euthanasia Prevention Coalition's website. Let me share the screen here. So now we can see, uh, is there some, somewhere in particular you would point people to? Yeah, I would say definitely keep up with Alex Schattenberg's blog, the executive director. As far as the apologetics side, I would lean more towards the disability-focused organizations. Not Dead Yet is a really good one. If you're looking for somewhere to volunteer, I would recommend your local independent living resource center. Okay, so notdeadyet.org, a national grassroots disability rights group that opposes legalization of assisted suicide and euthanasia as deadly forms of discrimination. Okay, so you can really educate yourself. Now, you were beginning to say something else as well. Just in terms of things you can do, there are great organizations all across the U.S. and Canada called independent living resource centers that help people with disabilities to stay out of institutions and be able to be in their own homes with the supports they need. All right, Taylor, well, thanks for talking to us today about the pro-life movement in Canada. We hope that people have been informed a little bit on what's happening with our northern neighbors and how it is that they can get better educated on this issue. So thank you so much for talking with us today. You're very welcome, Bob. Thank you so much for having me. And to everybody listening out there, please pray for Canada. We need it. And I want to thank all of our viewers and listeners for tuning in on this episode of our Being Pro-Life series. 
head to the website and view all the links talked about in this episode at www.catholiccincinnati.org slash being dash pro dash life. Thank you again for joining us today, and I look forward to being with you next time.